Hi there and welcome to Lorena's Labyrinth. Today we're going to be talking about the Angel of Beauty. Um, Angel Iafiel is um, how I refer to her. In fact, actually, I struggle over the pronunciation of the name. So it could be Iofiel, it could be Iofiel, it could be Oifiel, I'm not sure. But whatever uh, pronunciation is the one that you're comfortable with, that's all that's important. And not only that, you don't have to call her by the name that I give you. You can actually just call her the Angel of Beauty. So anyway, before I go ahead speaking specifically about the information that she can give to us, I'd like to say thank you for clicking on the video and being part of the journey. Journey. Um, I invite you to leave your own comments, your own understandings and experiences, or anything else that you might make to wish to make uh, public if you like. I always do read the comments, even if I don't respond to all of them, and even if I don't respond to all of them straight away. And I generally will do this on the Sunday video, which is called the yarning video. And just a reminder, we do have the angel playlist and um, I'm going to continue to build it out. So at the moment we've got, because I feel the Angel of Beauty is the second of the Angel videos that I'm loading. There will actually eventually be about 50, perhaps more videos, but at the moment we've got the Archangels, we've got the Angel of Knowledge, and now we have the Angel of Beauty. Iofiel's name means beauty of God and she reminds that everything is, that is natural is both beautiful and eternal. It's not influenced by fashion or trends and that true beauty never ever goes out of style. Within the angelic hierarchy, um, she's one of the order of angels that are referred to as the second order manifesting angels. Now, these particular angels are tasked with refining the visions um, that are selected and projected from the heart angels, because every angel's got a purpose. And they, the angels of beauty focus on the detail that adds vividness um, and brings a vision into form, including earthly form. Now, actually, when I say um, angels of beauty, I mean the second order manifesting angels. Now, where some of the angels will have a wispy type aura, the second order angels have a very well developed golden type aura that is more defined. Their auras still have a winged aspect to them. Um, and just a reminder here for people, the auras are light and energy and they don't actually have these great big white feathery wings that I show in the images here. It's just that um, from an aesthetic perspective, I like to show the images with angels with wings. And also it's more comfortable for many people. And if I put a human face on them, it's more relatable for people um, as far as connecting goes. A lot of the time everybody's different of course so either way the second order manifesting angels they work with us to help us find our personal truth and to be able to communicate it and this is where truth becomes more defined as um, knowledge people can be working with the angels of knowledge for example in different ways um, it's not always easily identifiable um, because people exhibit as per their own um, natural leanings, shall we say. And if a person is in denial of angels, they may not be aware that they're actually working with them. But there is always this undercurrent that happens in our lives. Now, when it comes to the angels of beauty, we um, a person can be living with the angel or living and working with the angels of beauty, even if they're living in a cluttered environment. All that is happening is that they're repressing. Um, those aspects of beauty that are in their environment. And the other thing is too, that a person that has accepted and embraced the qualities of beauty, they're going to be working with actively enhancing beauty in the environment, while the other person who's living within clutter and squalor perhaps is not only repressing it, but they're burying the beauty beneath fear and judgment, and they're blocking their actual gifts. Now, both people actually, even the person that lives with clutter has got some really amazing gifts there that are being repressed. And so it's a case of digging deep to bring this beauty to the surface so that they can live with it within their environment. It's basically when we see them working with or against we're seeing actions for the person that is blocking their gifts 
that are incongruent, shall we say. They still have to recognise and heal their vulnerabilities and their weaknesses to be able to embrace the gifts of creativity and beauty. So the primary message of I feel is that basically she reminds us that the creator or the beauty of the creator and creativity and creation often lies hidden within the depths of our material world, worlds. Um, we're often so distracted by what's happening around us and focused on these superficial aspects of life that the true beauty of life remains hidden. So she encourages us to look below the surface when we're looking at others and to go beyond this outward appearance um, that we see, the superficial, and connect to each person um, that part of them that is the eternal truth it's the part that some people call the inner spark or the namaste that lies within and this means that when you're interacting with other people you're actually recognizing them for who and what they are and in this way you help them to feel heard and to be seen and you assist them to become aligned with their own truth so it's dig beneath the surface and connect with that inner spark in other people so this divine essence, if you like, of the creator, this is the part of us that responds to things such as art, poetry, books and music. And when we respond to the energy of these things, we're responding to the essence of the crea creator, not just the human creator, but the energy of the divine creator. Um, so it's multiple layered, shall we say, and words can never actually do justice to the experience of the divine and true beauty, as you will know yourself. We can try to explain it, but unless, unless a person has an experience of it, they're just not going to understand it. And this is why it becomes difficult to try and explain spirituality and connection and the interaction be, between the divine and the light beings or spirit, because words are very limited as descriptors. We cannot express the vibrancy of colors, just a prime example. Um, just in life in general, if you think about a situation, for example, I've put this image of a flower up here. When we try to apply our individual um, understanding or recognitions of this particular flower, um, it's going to be quite difficult. And this is, for example, we see shades of yellow differently and we use descriptors. So somebody might try and describe, I wouldn't use the word mustard yellow for the centre of the flower here. But for somebody, if they were trying to describe this flower, they might say, oh, it's got um, a mustard colour of the centre, but then it goes kind of sunshiny or butter yellow or whatever. It all becomes very ambiguous and the words just do not do justice to the image, let alone the experience. But when we look at the flower, we can actually see this divine perfection in it. It's just amazing. So if you allow yourself to look at this flower and to appreciate it, it's going to convey a feeling to you. So it is the feelings that are the measure, if you like, of what beauty is um, or how it creates something within us or appeals to our divine essence. And this goes the same for all beauty, right? True, be true beauty can only be comprehended, can't even speak, comprehended and understood through this emotional response and appreciation. I mean, that can go into a different story of why um, when we communicate with people and we communicate telepathically, we're working from a feeling center, we're transmitting um, emotions and feelings to people. So within this context, the, the message of the angel of beauty is one that, you know, words don't do justice to the spectrum of beauty and the inner realms. And these realms are waiting for you to discover them, for you to feel the beauty. And um, we must endeavor to open up to beauty, to seeing it, to feeling it. And before we can really truly open up to beauty, we've got to ask ourselves some questions. And when we talk about asking ourselves some significant questions, we're talking about the art of reflection. And the first question really to ask ourselves is, how comfortable are we with the word beauty, you know? Does it create discomfort for us? Do we have other words to describe 
how we perceive beauty um, and if you can think of one by all means please leave a comment now other more specific questions we can ask ourselves is around our perception of beauty and who and what we are is how comfortable do we feel with how we look you know how do we feel about the way our home looks or feels and our car or our work environment what does it all feel like not what does it look like it's like what does it feel like now if your environment is not supporting your inner self to feel at the very least comfortable um but hopefully appreciative of your surroundings then it's not supporting the truth of who and what you are um, you will know this for example we talked about clutter before most people that are surrounded by clutter feel very disorganized and it impacts on their mood negatively and um, they can become overwhelmed they look around they think oh I've got to do something but they put it off because it all looks too hard and it all just becomes compounded so clutter is not a healthy self-expression it doesn't support them feeling the beauty of the creative they like in their own home so the key to this is if you're not feeling good it's time to do a makeover and that applies not just to your environment but also to your appearance so when we talk about reflecting upon personal beauty you know we can take a look at ourselves and our own attitudes you know we might find that we're overly fixated for example on things like um, the use of makeup or Botox which is of course very popular in modern society and the surgical or non-surgical physical improvements and enhancements um, that are now available by science um, but when we're doing this we're actually ignoring the natural beauty in favor of social trends and stereotypes now these are basically fashion trends and fads you know if we use excessive amounts of makeup and enhancement then it's time to start asking ourselves some serious questions you know what is it that we're frightened of what do you fear because excessive vanity is about wearing a mask it's about hiding ourselves um, I wear makeup I'm not saying that we shouldn't wear makeup and that we shouldn't try and make the best of ourselves but it's looking at that balance okay the way we heal ourselves from uh, pride and vanity is actually to take some actions and we can start by if you're an overuser of makeup and enhancements try cutting back to the bare minimum um, try using simple clothing or simple hair simple face and nails allow your natural beauty to shine um, an example of this too is if you're naturally gray and you're dyeing your hair all the time perhaps it's time to allow your natural gray to show because there is a beauty associated with aging because as we age um, our features start to soften um, and just a reminder you don't have to stop all the enhancements just try uh, the suggestion would be try to allow yourself to be comfortable with your natural beauty instead of hiding who and what you are behind this false layer and mask it's really important for everybody to find their own beauty standard of what they think is beautiful for them as well and this is about a balance I guess because where we can have people that are so obsessed with the external appearance that they are wearing this ongoing mask and layer of material fabric color whatever um, injectables and this kind of thing on the other side of the spectrum we have people that pay absolutely no attention to their appearance and um, they can neglect themselves quite a lot and at the same time they don't feel beautiful or they don't see their own beauty because uh, they wear their beauty on the inside now for these people that have neglected their appearance um, and don't like what they see when they look in the mirror I mean we have some things that we can work with and some things that we don't for example I'm going to give you an example here for example um, we might not be able to change our nose without surgical enhancements um, if we were the sort of person that overused makeup we might use the makeup to create shadows and all the rest of it or we could just accept that that is our nose and it's beautiful and it matches all the features of our face but somebody that neglects their appearance might perhaps um, not moisturize their skin or not have a skin routine and then it starts to go a bit dull so 
um, you know, it needs to have an exfoliation or whatever. So these are signs of neglect. Now, some people will go that pathway where they just neglect themselves. And it is possible to actually do some or take some actions to make the most of what they've got. Um, because if they're, I suppose to simplify it, if they're shining on the inside but dull on the outside, then it's time for them to actually do a bit of overhaul. And that can be a bit of self-grooming. Um, it could be getting a new haircut. You know, if the people have got grey hair and it's got that yellow tinge about it, they might be able to get a brightener or a toner. You know, if they don't wear makeup, they might want to explore things like, you know, a little bit of minimalistic makeup, perhaps a little bit of mascara or some lip gloss or, um, as I said before, maybe even getting a good skincare regime happening. Um, and then the other thing is too that they might do all of that but every now and again people need a pamper they might not be the sort of people that go overboard um, they might not suffer from uh, pride or vanity but at the same time it's always nice to go and have a little bit of self-care such as a massage or a facial treatment you know for guys they might want to go um, to a barber and get a good groom and have their beards trimmed and shaped the idea, of course, is that if you take care of your body, it's going to take care of you. And if we try to eat healthily and get enough exercise, these are the, you know, for the people that neglect themselves, um, you will know that when you're not taking care of yourself physically, you don't get enough oxygen in your blood and your skin also starts to dull and you don't feel as good about yourself as you could. But when you find your own beauty standard based on self-love and self-respect with appreciation of your natural beauty, this becomes an authentic reflection of who and what we are. We are all individually unique and we are all individually beautiful within our uniqueness. And we don't need to look the same as everybody else. It's okay to be different and it's okay and it's really encouraged to become comfortable with a lack of symmetry, I suppose. You know, if you look at everybody's face, um, most people will have um, perhaps one eyebrow higher than the other, for example. I'm going to talk more about this on the yarning video on Sunday. Sometimes when things have been neglected for a long time, um, it's easier for us to start by beautifying our environment before we start on ourselves. I mean, ideally, you would, if you've neglected your own personal appearance as well, it would be good to start working on yourself at the same time as working on your environment. But either way, we can work on the environment and give it an overhaul, uh, whether it's at work or at home. Um, start firstly by giving it a clean and then by throwing away or recycling or donating anything that we no longer use. Um, if you've been holding on to something for a long time, you might, you know, with that whole belief that, well, I better hang on to it because I might need it one day. Well, the idea is if you've been holding on to it for longer than 12 months and it's gathering dust, um, you're probably not going to need it. And if you've been holding on to it for even longer than 12 months and maybe a couple of years, it really is time to shift it onto a new home. So basically clean everything, allow it to sparkle and shine again. And you'll notice that this clean environment actually creates a lighter feeling because remember we're talking about feelings. And if the things in our environment start to shine, that also makes us feel lighter on the inside. And we can also help this process of lightening up the environment and making it feel better um, by adding a few things, a few little touches, you know, like fresh flowers if you can. Um, I like to burn incense and candles and essential oils. I've got some vaporizers and stuff like that. Um, you might even want to put in some pictures and add some color uh, to make the environment feel cheery. Um, and I mean, the, the thing is to you identify what is comfortable and what is beautiful for you. So some people prefer to have a calming and more peaceful environment. So they might be looking to fill their room with the blues. Um, somebody might be trying to create an atmosphere that's cheery and they might look for colors like the oranges and the pinks. It's whatever you need to help you to feel at peace. Now, you would be encouraged through this process, of course, to invite and invoke not only the angels of beauty, but also the angels of blessings, such as Amara Shire. We've got her video up as well. And to do a little ceremony as you clear the space. Now, if you've got a big space to clear, like you've got a whole house full of clutter, you would be encouraged to start 
one room at a time and perhaps bless each room as you go through the process. So another consideration for reflection is, of course, as I make these suggestions to you of what you can do to um, beautify your environment or how you can uh, increase your feelings of being beautiful and appreciate your natural beauty, I can sort of hear in my mind um, or my imagination people turning around saying, well, yes, that all costs money, doesn't it? You know, if you want to go to the beautician, have a pan, but you're going to have to pay for it, which is quite true, okay? And yes, if we want to buy product for our skin, um, we've got to buy it. It's relying on money and not everybody's got money. But the whole thing is too, that just because we don't have money and we can't afford these things, doesn't mean that we're not able to do what we would like to do or to be able to, um, to appreciate and create beauty in and around us. And this becomes the opportunity to look at, you know, what is this belief in money as underpinning um, in our entire belief and perception in beauty and creating beauty. We don't have to have money to be able to appreciate beauty. We can actually be very creative. We can be resourceful. You know, for example, when I say put flowers in your garden or, or in your room, um, well, you might not have a garden. But at the same time, you might be able to create um, a potted plant garden. Now, this is why I've put this image up here. We don't have to go and pay for planters. We can actually recycle and we can take cuttings from plants and trees and flowers if need be so that we've got this ongoing resource that we can reach into if we want to use it. There's many ways that we can um, create beauty that is, you know, because beauty is obviously personal. There's that old saying that one person's trash is another person's treasure. So you're going to be able to find things um, at secondhand shops or trash and treasure stalls and all the rest of it that you can actually use um, for very low cost, get them quite cheap and put in your house. Now, the other way of actually being resourceful is having a chat to your neighbours because quite often they're recycling stuff or they're donating and this kind of thing. And if you have a chat with them, they might have something that they no longer want or need. A prime example of this, which I think was um, rather beneficial for me, it was a really good thing that happened the other day, is here in Australia, what a lot of people do is they actually put stuff on their verge. Um, sometimes it's rubbish. If it's rubbish, they get a sticker. The councils will go out and say, take it to the dump, basically, um, if it's really bad. But a lot of the time, people will put out stuff that they no longer want. Like on one side, I've had um, the neighbours put out a little scooter that her child has grown out of. It's now too big for so they've left the scooter on the verge so that somebody that's driving past might see it and they might be able to have a use for it and so they pick it up and take it with them now the reason why i say one person's trash is another person's treasure is across the road from me a house has been sold and um, the previous owners they had just done complete renovations and overhaul and i think if i was watching a tv program i would say to a high standard, I think would be the words that they use. Nothing was cheap about their renovations. Well, I just happened to be getting in my car to go out when the new owner walked outside with this amazing light fitting under her arm and she was about to put it on the verge. And I said, I couldn't help it. It was reflexive. I said, are you throwing that away? She said, yes, I've just put a coffee table out here and it's gone as quick as a flash. She said, would you like this light fitting? And I said, no, thank you, as you do. I don't need one, thank you. And she goes, are you sure? And I went, then I thought, for sure. And I went, actually, I know somebody that's building a house. If you don't mind, I will take it with me and I'll ask them if they want it. If they don't want it, I'll put it out on my verge so somebody else can pick it up, okay? So anyway, it turned out to be a very... Um, very good score it was a danish pendant lamp fitting to go over a dining room table or something like that so anyway long story short one person's trash is another person's treasure um, this woman apparently put in chandeliers but you know other times if we can't afford to buy a nice carpet for example we can recycle rags colored material and turn um, rags into what is called rag mats so it's about being resourceful. We can create beauty by being resourceful. 
You know, other ways of being resourceful as well is if you can't really afford to get a haircut done because honestly it's become very expensive here in Australia um, or even dental work, you might be able to go to the trade schools or the colleges or whatever um, where they offer discounts or discount rates for students. You know, um, I'd be interested to hear your suggestions here as well. I remember back in the day, I don't think they do it um, anymore, but who knows, they used to do free makeup sessions um, in the big stores where you could go in and they would test product on you and you could get um, product tester as well. So, I mean, if you've got suggestions that people might be able to use to help them feel better about their personal experience and self-care, please do make a comment here. And I've got to be honest, you owe it to yourself to try and live beautifully. And this is because beauty is an energy system of the vibration of love. It's very, very important that we incorporate beauty as a part of the process of our personal and self-development and raising our self-awareness so that we can increase our own personal vibration of love. So basically, I feel encourages us to spend some time through each day to express appreciation and gratitude of beauty um, and the beauty of things as part of raising our vibration. We're talking natural things here as well. I mean, we can appreciate beauty, but I guess that's my little push, you know, appreciate the natural beauty of things around us as part of raising our vibration because it's far easier for light to penetrate an open and grateful heart. So gratitude is vitally important. Now, as we're able to do this, we become closer to the creator, the angels and their exuberant energy and nothing compares to this energy. So you're encouraged to invoke the creator always the creator first god by whatever name you call him her um, and i feel to open your heart and your mind to observe notice receive and respond to beauty and to actively seek to create beauty in your life and then open to prepare to feel this wonderful energy and um, you will <laughs> you won't even need to prompt yourself to demonstrate gratitude you will just be so grateful for the abundant beauty and blessings in your life so in regard to I feel, this is all that I can give you today. So I'm going to call it to a close as part of trying to make this video shorter. I wish I could do it quicker. I'll have to stop waffling. Anyway, what I'm going to do is this Sunday in the yarning video, I'm going to actually do the chitter chatter section. And when I say this Sunday, that's April the 28th. And I'm going to be talking about beauty um, as part of the chitter chatter um, because I think it's important in these modern times. Uh, but for now, I'm going to say, look, thank you very much for being part of the journey. Before I go, do tell me, let me know. Feel free to write a comment. What do you think of this image here? I'm actually really pleased with it. It's an AI image and it's not actually enhanced by any other digital stuff at the moment. And I believe it's come out surprisingly well. Um, what do you think? Is this the kind of angel image that you like? Because obviously I'm going to be creating a lot more of them. Um, um, by the way, while I think about it too, another by the way, um, if you like the content, uh, please do consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video just to help me out with the YouTube algorithms. It would be very much appreciated. And for now, though, I'm going to say thanks very much for being part of my journey. Have a wonderful week, blessed day, love you, leave you, catch you later. Bye-bye for now.